What's up, guys? Skyless here with episode 7 of the Gears of War lesson series. This week, we we'll be talking about some of the basics and my settings, and uh, maybe some things you didn't know about the game. Just uh, trying to ease people into Gears 3, since uh, I think a lot of people on the channel are potentially new to Gears or haven't played in a while, or never saw the game play competitively, so they don't know some of these smaller things that a lot of people don't know about. So, if you're a veteran guy, I'm sorry, but uh, you might learn something from it. Uh, and I also posted gameplay over on Amazing MLG channel, which I'll put in the comments of me playing Annex if you want to see some gameplay. So uh, I mixed some of that gameplay into this video as well for entertainment's sake. So let's go ahead and start off. I'm going to go over my settings. And this is basically the settings of most of the community. The one thing I will note is gore is off. And I'm going to show you a clip here in a second of why. Uh, the frame rate with the gore on gets real bad in some game types and maps. And as you see, it's not my, that's not your computer, it's not my computer, that's the actual game, that's how it ran. So you want to have that off for the most part. And you can keep it on, it gives you a good idea of whenever you got hits on somebody. So, again, it's something that you can mess with. If you want to have it on, you can have it on, but you'll get better frame rate with it off. And as you can see, I have my music volume down and my dialogue volume down as well. Uh, some people put the dialogue on one so they can hear when people are like coming up on them if they yell. But usually that's not the case, so I keep it off. Sensitivity is the other big one. In Gears 1, you had to have high, high, high. But in Gears 2, because of the slower move speed, you can get away with having medium uh, for the L trigger. So some people play with high, medium, high. Some people play at high, medium, medium. Uh, it was really just a matter of uh, what you want to be good at. Usually the people with high, medium, medium, or high, medium, high were better at using Lancer and Pistol. So a lot of time host or the... Player, or team support players would use medium so that they'd be able to lance a bit better. And I want to talk about how I have my hands on the controller as well. If you use your middle finger, and it's going to be hard for anyone who doesn't play this way to understand, you have to try it for a week or so. If you use your middle finger, you'll have a faster trigger finger for pistoling and hammer burst. It's just a matter of fact, the more you do it, the more you'll uh, develop it. And I've done it for ages now. But at first I was skeptical, but after doing it for a few weeks, I started to see the improvement. And if you want to have a fast pistol, then it's something I recommend, is uh, switching to that middle finger. Alright, now we're going to get into some of the miscellaneous stuff, and uh, bear with me if you guys know this. But the Torpedo Melee is a bit stronger than the regular Melee. You can get two hit downs on TU6, and also you can just clip someone with a shot and get it down. And as you can see, the execution there, after you hit the Melee, it's actually a little bit quicker for the execution, so you end up killing them real fast. So if you get the melee to down him, you should just hit B real quick and then roll back to kill him. Alright, now, right hand advantage is something that a lot of people have trouble understanding. So I'm going to try and put it pretty clearly, because it gets talked about a lot whenever you hear some of uh, the better players talk and discuss like how they play. So, in Gears of War, the camera is always over your right shoulder. So what you want to do is position yourself so that you're usually on the left of the screen and then wherever you're aiming is on the right. That way you can see someone coming and you're in cover. So, in some situations, that doesn't work out. So, for example, in this situation, river, I'm over on the side, but I can't get into a safe spot to watch that door without strafing out real far. Where if I left, do left-hand advantage, and this is just hitting A, and then holding on the left trigger as I back up to cancel, then I can go ahead and look around the corner, and I'm only showing a little bit of my body. So that way you get the right-hand effect without being on the right hand. So it's a good way to neutralize that advantage, which a lot of people are looking for whenever they fight you. Uh, top level people know that positioning is really important, so they'll usually be looking to get into that kind of a scenario. And then, uh, this is to illustrate the shotgun. It actually resets against your chest if you don't do anything for a while. So, as you can see, it's usually out far to the right and ready to shoot. But if you don't do anything, it resets and it adds about a tenth of a second to your shot. So, to neutralize this, you just kind of scope in or bounce off a wall randomly to keep it ready. And, of course, if you switch weapons, it's already primed to be ready, so you're good to go. Another thing I want to note was that you can drop a shield for people who don't know. Every time I see someone do uh, the neck snap in the middle of a fight, I cringe. So I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, you just change weapons and it drops it. So one of the questions I get the most is how do I improve with X weapon? So they'll say how do I improve my snipe, how do I improve my shotgun, how do I improve my pistol, how do I improve my torque bow? And the shortest example and the best example is or answer is to say that the more you play, the better you'll get with it. And you want to get as much repetition as possible with that weapon in order to build your skills with it. So I developed a couple of drills. Uh, competitive players usually would sit in shotgun rooms and have just 10 people just running around shotgunning on like Blood Drive or Avalanche. 
So getting shotgun back is pretty easy, but getting torque wheel practice or one of the non-starting weapons is usually a lot more difficult. So I made up this little drill. It's just nine bots, two minute rounds, execution, torque wheels on map. And you want to pay attention to how you're shooting and what's working, what isn't working. So for example, when I did this, I found that if I spend a lot of time aiming, then I shoot worse. So I found that if I do quick twitch shots or shoot real quickly, I'm generally more accurate. And this helps because the bots, if you look at them, they roll away the way Epic programmed them. So it happens to be a real good way to practice because if you're good at that kind of shooting, then automatically it fits into how the bots play. But again, with snipers, sniper I feel like is more intuitive where it's just you shoot and you aim. But Torpo, obviously there's a bit more strategy involved. So I found that doing this really improved my Torpo game. I ended up doing it the week before any tournament and uh, got pretty good with it. Uh, again, torquing bots obviously is not the same as torquing in a match, nor even the same as torquing in a public match. But the more repetition you get with the weapon and the more comfortable you are with aiming it, the better you're going to be. So again, if you want to get better with a weapon, you have to play with it a lot. So I go into Annex sometimes and I just shoot my Lancer or my pistol. And, uh, that was how I ended up getting good with weapons. Uh, that's what I recommend uh, just by anyone. So, I think that's about it. There was also a way to throw invisible inks or grenades. And someone, if they fix this and people know about it, then please tell me. But uh, there used to be a way you could throw invisible nades by bouncing it off terrain. And I'll put the video I made a couple years ago in the description. But I tried to replicate it today. I couldn't do it. So be on the lookout for that in Gears 3. And again, I'll put the video down in the comments. And I'll also put the video down for this Annex match that you're watching now. So if anyone wants to watch some gameplay, you can go ahead and watch that. And that's it for this week. Next week, I'm going to be going over one of our strats from MLG Dallas since I still have the VOD. So I'll just do an in-depth strat overview next week. And who knows what's after that. Just go ahead and uh, post any comments or feedback below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next week.